What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 3 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Aranus Assault Spite campaign. So as we saw last time, we were able to destroy Lucini for good, taking the plains of Lucini, our second province in its entirety. And now we gotta get the commandment up and running, go for Dredge the Sea immediately. And now we are ready to start moving elsewhere. Namely, it'll be the north as we move up towards uh, Tilea and Skaven Blight, oh, while well, hopefully leaving Monte Castello to hold our uh, eastern flank against whatever may come from the side of the map. Kind of hard to say. Uh, these guys don't like us, so they might declare war on us, and it might be interesting to fight Kislev, but we're not going to do so preemptively ourselves. We got other stuff to do. Anyway, uh, before we get started, we did indeed achieve the likes and comments thresholds last episode, so this will be an hour episode. As promised, and I make the same offer again, 400 likes and 50 comments, and the next episode will be an hour long as well. If we reach 500 likes and 60 comments, plus 100 and plus 10, I will do two episodes on Saturday. So keep that in mind for those that are into that sort of thing. Also, as promised at the end of last episode, I went ahead and fought the little tiny battle at Mintopwa, uh, rather than doing it on screen, as it was one of those times that the autoresolve was going to screw us over. And on the bright side, uh, we were able to get the munitions hut here immediately Immediately. We were building one at Aldente, and uh, now we don't have to. So we'll be able to get the mortars up and running shortly, and then the carronades shortly after that. Great. Anyway, now let's begin with what we gotta do. Aranessa, we're gonna move you right here to be close to Madeline. Uh, Maddie, I would like you... I was about to say raising the dead, or possibly even recruiting stuff, but conversely, perhaps not. Right, let me think about this. Uh, what we could do instead is this. We'll go to technology and then we'll go for efficient necromancy to get the minus 20% raise dead reduction cost. And we will raise dead next turn out of the Battle of Capelli, Grave Marker, Battle Marker, whatever. Ever. Next, we will do some building building. As Sartosa itself will probably go for the Rusty Pistol Trove because I want to get those rotting Promethean gunnery mobs as fast as possible as they're probably my favorite unit in the uh, in the Vampire Coast roster, at least in terms of effectiveness. Obviously, they don't match the rule of cool of the likes of a Necrofex Colossus or the Depth Guard, which are obviously cooler units, uh, but in terms of uh, effectiveness for their cost, you just gotta love those gunnery crabby boys. Uh, Al Dente, is there anything else we want to build you here, for now at least? I think in terms of recruitment, we're fine, so let's go for the slave pits. And we're gonna have to start making money here. We'll need a money-making province so that we can get more armies up and running. Otherwise, I believe we are good to go. So on the sign, skill points, skip, outpost available, skip, end the turn. And let's head... You know what? Let's head to Cesario Wood. I... <laughs> I think this may be a poor tactical decision, so don't necessarily do what I do if you're doing a similar sort of uh, uh, run. Um, but I think that this will be a really fun battle. We saw last episode that these guys had, I think, two ancient... Wait, no. An ancient tree man... And yeah, raise that cost bonus. Uh, yeah, so they've got the ancient tree man, at least two malevolent tree men, at least two malevolent treekin, and at least one great forest eagles, plus whatever else they have here. This is going to be extremely tough, as if they are tier four and tier three units, and pretty much every single unit we have is tier one, with a couple of exceptions. Oh, even the mortar is tier one, and with a couple of exceptions being the tier two zombie pirate gunnery mob with handguns. Yeah. Can we manage it? I don't know, but I'd love to find out. And if we fail, well, we'll raise the dead and we'll come again. In true Slaneshi style. I mean, uh, anyway. <laughs> On to Capella you go, Maddie and Nessie. You will both. Let's see, what do we have in terms of raise dead? Available. Uh, ooh, we got an extra zombie pirate gunnery mob bomber unit. I do like that. I do like that very much indeed. All right, let's take the bomber. Always worth our time. In fact, I was gonna build some. Then, 
Well, let's build at least one mortar for now. We'll transfer both of them to Aranessa, and I think we'll actually raise a couple of bloated corpses for this fight. Usually at... Oh, damn, they have two great eagles and three malevolent tree spirits. Or tree kin, rather. Hmm. This is going to be ugly. It's going to be very, very ugly. Missile resistance at 25% on the Dryads as well. Huh. I don't know if I can pull this off with these armies. I'm sure we'll be fine. Anyway, let's... <laughs> let's not think about it. Let's just do it. Uh, deck droppers. We would like to replace the Felbats with the deck droppers. In fact, can we raise any deck droppers? And we can. There's one here. Mm, tempted to raise it now so that possibly we get another one up and running next turn. I mean, they obviously have much less in terms of their melee defenses, but they can at least provide some annoying missile fire. No, these are the pistol deck droppers, they're not the handgun deck droppers. Can the pistol ones fire while moving, incidentally? Uh, they can indeed, they can indeed fire while moving. I mean, we can keep the two sacrificial Felbats in Aranessa's army for now. You know what? Screw the deck droppers for now, I think. We'll sacrifice the Hellbats and re-raise them. Or raise them generally. Uh, let us not build this here, because we'll be deleting it shortly. And let us upgrade you, Horde of Filched Firearms, and the rest, I believe, is good. Alrighty. And let's pick a new tech. We have no more Infamy Alas to spend, so we'll switch to Command Crews as we want a few things things in this particular uh, uh, in this particular part of the tech tree seascape artist in particular with all that campaign extra movement range is going to be very needed on this big old old world map all righty maddie oh you know what move a little bit closer to nessa not much closer but you know i don't know if we can travel all the way to the uh, Uh, do we need to build anything else? No. I don't know if we can travel all the way to Sasuria Wood in a single bound, so I risk it. Any rights that we may want to use right now? Uh, Vanguard Deployment Attribute doesn't really help us right now. Control plus 5 and Recruitment cost, not super helpful. We're still trying to reach rank 12 for Queen Bess. Mm, so I think, yeah, for now we're okay. Skip, skip, building upgrade available, skip and the turn, and let's see about this. Yeah, as I was saying, this is probably going to be a tactical error, but in the name of fun, I think it'll be a good battle, and uh, sometimes, in fact, in every campaign, I do some stupid things just because I think they'll be entertaining. Fun is the name of the game, after all. Alright, let's see. Alright, we're good. 231. Ah, the Whispers of the Eyeless. Ooh, the research rate reduction and miscast base chance is gonna hurt, but oh well, I hear them, because we will get a huge buff once we eventually reach it. Uh, recruit an additional lord. Not gonna do so right now. We've got other... we've got bigger fish to fry. Alright, uh, let's set this up. And let's see if we can pull this off. First of all, we're going to raise two bloated corpses. Ah, we can raise a mortar if we desire. Hmm... I think about it. Uh, raise two bloated corpses. I am going to give them names because, but these names will be for only one. Bubbles and bloated corpse Oreos. Ideal. If you guys choose to name bloated corpses, I will not be renaming them once they die. This is a one-use name simply because I rarely build bloated corpses. I just think this is going to be a dangerous enough battle to actually warrant it. Actually, you know what, let's get a couple more names in here while we're at it. You guys have already been providing plenty. Shambling barrels for you, Dead Gunner 1, and uh, let's go the Grog Gunners for you. Mm, deck Gunner number 2. All right, and we'll name more after. I don't want to spend too much time on it. Then we will swap out the Zombie Pirate Gunnery Mob with Bombers. And we will swap out the gunnery mob with handguns or the two mortars because I want them in Aranessa's army. At least for now. She'll probably get Sartos and Grapeshot or a mix. Well, at least Sartos and Grapeshot. I still haven't decided what exactly her final army will look like, but we'll... we'll Play it by ear. Uh, Maddie, I would like you to get the Drowned Dead so that you can actually cast it and summon those zombie pirate gunnery mobs. We're going to need all the extra units we can get here. Then, 
Uh, do we need to raise anything else to replace any of the things we have? I mean, the four zombie part gunnery mobs with handguns should be hopefully sufficient here. Pirates we got two stacks after all. I'm gonna assume that this is fine. Then, Nessie, we're gonna... Mm, we could level you up. Um, but I think once again we're gonna save. Alright, we'll leave that alone. We will, however, give the Mournville Haunter, Mr. Billy Butler, his Tormentor Sword, even though the magical damage is useless on him. He's the one most likely to be in the center of the fray. Uh, we'll give him the... Say the Talisman of Protection and the Armor of Fortune for now. Most of these are probably actually going to go to Lords. It's just that I would like him to be in the main part of the combat right now. And thus he'll be more likely to get damaged. You can also probably get Evan... Now get Monkey Jacket. Yeah, we get more physical resistance out of Evan Ness, but the problem there is going to be the fact that most of the enemies being forest spirits do magical damage. So it's not going to be as useful. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, let's get materialize. A little bit of weapon strength, a little bit of hit points, make him a little bit more survivy. Uh, Gunnery White, you have the Lucky Spyglass, we could get more ammunition, or we could get the crack, uh, Cackle Fruit ability, rather. I think for this we'll get the Cackle Fruit ability. And we want to, oh, if only we had one more point to grab that Enchanted Ballistics to buff up the allies. I really wanted to get that, but oh well. Can't have everything. And I believe that's all. <laughs> all right. I am concerned about this idea. Very concerned. Away we go. Madeline, I want you moving right up to Kirin the Lost. Let's see if we can force the enemy into a fight outside the settlement, as I would prefer that. Huh, actually, hmm, we could keep these guys out of the fight by attacking Caesarea Wood. Hmm. Would that be better, is the question. The answer is I'm not sure. On the one hand, they will have towers. On the other hand, they'll be forced to blob up. And we'd be able to get this army not attacking us. Maybe it would be better to attack them in the, ter in the forest territory itself. Alrighty, fine. We're going to attack the forest territory. Uh, you are going to go into Parlay Stance and you're going to hit Caesarea Wood. I guess we can sack it as well. A little bit of extra stuff. I'm just wondering if there's anything that we should do other than this. Like, for example, get more mortars if we are attacking this way. Nah, you can't raise them anymore anyway. You could raise one extra mortar, but what would we lose? We need the Sartosa Free Companies. Nah, we'll deal with two mortars. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Will it actually be fine? I don't know. But we're about to find out. Away we go. Declare war, yes. And attacky. There we go. We had a mission to do that after all. You're gonna go into encamp stance. And wait, yeah, Pyrrhic victory. Ooh. Dangerous. And this will give us an additional 10% range and 5 melee defense. You, Aranessa, cannot go into any other stances. You are an infamy. Away we go. Alright. All right, I don't know. All right, well, it may not be tactically the wisest decision, but Aranessa agrees, and that's good enough for me. Anyway, we begin by bombarding the enemy settlement, or at least those units uh, that we can reach. It looks like nearly every mortar shell. A missed, but not to worry, the deck gunners won't be missing nearly as much. Oh, this little tree is uh, right in the way to block a decent amount of their shots as well. Man, yeah, the, uh, the eagles and the treekin and the tree man, and they're they're gonna take some effort to bring down. On the bright side though, because this is a settlement battle, we have the free time to wait back here until our reinforcements arrive. Because we have a full stack of zombies, we'll be sending them in first to die, if need be, and then the Sartosans can follow up once we start running out of zombie bodies to throw at the enemy. This is the way that Vampire Coast or otherwise should be played. Anyway, 
as his eternal guard unit is still holding, but at about half HP. And you know what? Maybe I'll just speed this up a little bit. Oh, oh, hello. Looks like some eagles decide to go after Mr. Billy Butler here. And in fact, they have blocked him in. I wasn't expecting this to happen, which ain't great. Billy's trying to move out of the uh, out of his position there. Looks a little bit upsetty about it. Uh, but the Eagles have boxed him in. On the unfortunate side for the Eagles, however, this does allow our uh, gunnery whites, together with the deck gunners, to start firing on said Eagles and hopefully bring them down and allow Billy to escape. There we go. Pulled himself out. Though the Eagles are very much still alive and a little over half HP. Alrighty, well, away we go, Billy. Get the heck out of there, bud. And we can, let's see, hopefully bring him down. Alright, where are the eagles going? Looks like they're gonna go after the deck gunners. Smart move, the deck gunners are extremely fragile and vulnerable. And are probably the biggest threat that we have against the uh, piles of enemy infantry. So it's best for the enemy to deal with them as fast as they can. Unfortunately for the eagles, though, Aranessa pops her spear fishers and that eagle fishers in this particular case and traps them in place, allowing our Sartosa militia or Sartosa free companies, or not militias, uh, to fire at the eagles. Billy moves in and crushes one of the eagles in revenge for blocking him in and tries to pull himself closer. Damn, Moringal hunters are huge uh, to go after the last eagle and brings it down as well. Well done, um, Billy boy. Uh, let's see what we have here. The gunnery way to moves closer. There is a malevolent Shuriken unit that has moved in to block in the entrance to the enemy settlement. Um, but unfortunately for the enemy, our second army has arrived. Big old blob of the dead is moving in, and now we have those handgunners to rely upon. Armor piercing, a reasonable range as well, which should be effective against both Treemen and Treekin, as long as we have sufficient numbers of zombies to keep the enemy in place. Billy and Aranessa are going to start working on this barricade, mostly so that we don't waste ammunition on it, while everybody else tries to gun down what they can. Dead gunners firing on the uh, Treekin, probably not too effective as they are just too resistant to this type of fire and the explosive damage from the deck gunners is wasted on this. But at least they're doing something, especially considering we can refill their ammo via the uh, uh, via the more powder ability on the gunnery white. Alrighty, here come the Treekin. Looks like they're gonna try to stop Billy and Aaron Nessa, and they're gonna move through the barricade, but we should be able to get out of there faster than them, as their speed is greatly reduced by Billy's presence. More importantly, the hand gunners have arrived. The zombies are here, or at least the first ranks of the zombies are here, and they're going to start firing on anything that tries to get out. And very, very nice, and more zombies are moving in. We're gonna send the uh, deckhands mobs and gunnery mobs in as well, once again, to take the brunt of the damage from the enemy until our Sartosans are ready to fight. All right, a few mortar shells coming in. Deck gunner is firing. Maybe we can knock out a few more of those Eternal Guard. While over here, it looks like we've trapped the enemy's a unit of Shuriken against our Rotting Prometheans. It's essentially an equivalent unit. Uh, both the Shuriken and the Rotting Prometheans are very uh, defensive, difficult to kill units, sort of. And resistant to damage. And if they just fought each other, it would take forever. So we're going to back the Krabby Boys off, allow Billy and Aranessa to continue trying to knock individual models out. Oh, and here comes a bigger tree to... damn. Makes even the Morngul Haunter look relatively tiny by comparison, but unfortunately that is a lot of bullets for it to contend with. A single volley from all four of our handgunner units brings the malevolent tree man down to just under half HP. Aranessa and Billy will continue to hold him in place. And we should be able to bring him down by this, uh, by these volleys fairly quickly. And it's not like he can escape as Billy Butler's aura, chilling aura, will prevent him from running. 
Uh, there we go, and the first of the malevolent tree men gets felled. Very, very nice. Moving in some uh, zombies now. Billy's going to move away. He has to be careful about fighting the treekin and treemen and even the dryads as once again uh, that magical damage is uh, uh, is quite threatening to him. So we're going to keep away from the treekin and any other treemen in particular lest he gets too badly damaged. This I believe is a summoned unit of zombies and ooh, well, 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 if it isn't a second tree man moving in. But not to worry, we have more undead gunners to fire upon you and your treekin friends. And on top of that, the deckhands mobs are starting to stream in. Now that we finally have access to raise dead on, well, at least Madeline, we'll need to get a vampire captain on uh, uh, or in Aranessa's army to be able to raise dead as well. Maybe two, one for the raise the denizens of the deep, as in the lore of the deeps, and then one vampire lore. But anyway, I digress. Moving in those deckhands mobs with pole arms, the fisher's net stops the second tree man in his tracks for a little bit as the deck gunners and the hand gunners combine their firepower to bring the second tree man down. And very, very nice, and the zombies continue to hold. And we have also essentially filled up this little narrow choke point with more zombies, though the enemy doesn't appear to be wanting to take advantage of it at the current time. We're going to continue in this manner for a little while, at least while we have ammunition on the mortars, as well as a few of our other units, and then we'll send the Sartosa militia and any additional units around on the flanks. Once again, and when you have the capability of doing so, just like when playing the Vampire Counts, and what you want to do is wear down the enemy with your cheap disposable units. And the ones that can be raised again at any point. And then move in with the elites after, especially as you have to once again remember that vigor is very important in, in SFO, and you can use the zombies and other weak units to screw with the enemy's vigor and damage them and then clean up with your elites. All right, Billy's still leading the charge with the zombies and the Krabby Boys now joining the fray. Bit of a feeding frenzy going on. Dryad's probably not used to seeing the uh, denizens of the ocean where they live. All right, and it looks like some of those eagles have moved in on to the or to try to break through this choke point as well. Well, that's okay because Billy can move in, and he's been very instrumental in this particular battle so far. You gotta love those Morngul hunters once again. We'll definitely have plenty of these guys in armies, mostly because I really enjoy them as heroes. You gotta love units that are... I mean, it's it's one of those jack-of-all-trades sort of units, kind of like the uh, uh, Hellblaster Volley Gun. It's basically decent at everything, or if not, just outright great at everything. Alrighty, zombie deckhand mobs holding off the Eternal Guard, and even if the deckhand mobs all die, oh, we don't really care. Every single bit of damage taken by the enemy Eternal Guard is a bit of damage not dealt to our Sartosan units. We're also going to shortly move in our units of uh, gunnery mobs to try to bomb all the extra units that have arrived. And, but in the meantime, it's just a matter of holding the line with our tanky Krabby Boys, our easily replaceable zombies and summon zombies, and just continuing to gun the enemy down with hand gunners and deck gunners. Looks like the Eagles have routed and come back as the Eternal Guard continue to face off together with the Dryads against the zombie piles. And of course, Aranessa and Billy are fighting in the midst of this somewhere. Can't spot Aranessa, but frankly, it's going to be difficult to do so until she gets her rotting Promethean mount, as her model is really tiny. Alrighty. Oh, well, the enemy is certainly not getting through those choke points. Another pile of zombies gets summoned right behind the enemy Eternal Guard and Treekin, and now they're trapped. Zombies to the left of me, zombies to the right, etc. And very, very nice. Alrighty, and how are we doing over on this side? Aranessa's down to about half HP. We really need to get her some regeneration as she is. Uh, uh, she's down to take quite a bit of damage. 
And she has been in pretty much every fight. And ooh, the Shield of Thorns on the enemies should be very, very effective against our zombie piles. If only we actually cared about those types of casualties. So far, with only our zombie units having been damaged, I would say that we have taken absolutely no damage in this battle so far. And the enemy has lost plenty of malevolent treekin and treemen and eagles, essentially a ton of their elites. Beautiful. All right, how are our bombers doing? Gonna get ready to move into position. We also have our Sartosan flankers getting ready to go with a couple of zombie pirate gunnery mobs who are going to lead. And just so that said zombie pirates once again take the brunt of the enemy damage. The enemy has blobbed up here nicely, but I decided not to use our two bloated corpses on this blob, mostly because it would kill off a few too many of our units. I suppose what I could have done is a, a summoned a unit here to hold the line and then back off the rest of these guys but there isn't really a need and the reason for that is the bombers against the massive pile of a relatively low tier infantry and the bomber units are disgustingly effective so if these guys are gonna keep blobbing up like this they're all going to get destroyed and there we go, that looks like that's crippled three and about four of the units. Looks like one of the Dryads continues to fight, um, but uh, those couple of volleys just did these units in. Damn, is it? Yeah, it looks like uh, Aranus's model is smaller than even a single Dryad, which is why it was so difficult to find her in the middle of the fray here. Which is a shame, because you gotta love uh, the animations, all of the, uh, uh, all of the kicks and flips and stuff that she does. And there we go, swing it away, and let's see, Billy has moved through and is blocking off some malevolent dryads out here. The balance of power has shifted to about, I don't know, maybe 70% in our favor. The enemy has sent in yet another unit of malevolent treekin, but they're just unable to break through uh, the deckhands mobs with pole arms and the crabby boys together. It's a fairly decent combination. And considering the malevolent tree can have magical damage, this is one of the rare times where it better to use the deckhands mobs rather than the sirens, which combine with various monstrous units to very good effectiveness. Alrighty, and it's finally time for our Sartosan Militia to join the fray a little bit. They're going to be facing off against some Dryads up here. I just wanted to move them in both to fire into the backs of the enemy Treekin here and to allow our handgunners, which are streaming into the enemy settlement, if it can be called a settlement, in order to fire upon the enemy there. Our flankers are also moving in as well, the zombie pirate and gunnery mobs leading the charge, and will take the brunt of the damage once again from the enemy Sisters of the Thorn and Dryads, while our Sartosa militia follow up to deal the damage without taking the damage themselves. Alright, looks like the Sisters of the Thorn, an extremely threatening unit due to that uh, toxin uh, that they apply, are in very bad shape and will be out soon. And we do have to uh, focus them down, as other than the ancient tree men, and these guys are the biggest threat on the map. And I'm including the treekin and the uh, uh, and the eagles in that. You, if you haven't seen the Sisters of the Thorn do their thing, a lot of the time you'd be surprised or maybe shocked at how much damage they can dish out if they're left to do their own thing. Applying that toxin to units over and over again and continuing to fight and annoy them can be pretty darn devastating. Alrighty, Sisters of the Thorn are outy. And now it's a matter of dealing with the Dryads, who are now starting to get surrounded from every direction, both by Sartosans and by gunnery mobs. And basically, pistol shots from every side now. How are we doing over in the main portion of the battle? There's a unit of Dryads here. We're starting to move up our two bloated corpses just for fun. It looks like well, a couple of our units of uh, zombies are melting away, but, well, we summon them in order to sacrifice them. So that's as it should be. And Billy is still very much fighting on the front lines in this battle. Let's see how much damage he's done. 138 kills, 140 kills. And he's reached his healing cap, unfortunately, so the hunger won't hold 
hold much longer. And he's done nearly 30k damage. Very nice. Alrighty, and here comes Bubbles, our first bloated corpse. A jump on in. You give him a hug, friend, and there he goes. Fare thee well to Bubbles, but similarly, fare thee well to this entire unit of Dryads as they instantly melt away. Dropping down to about 10% HP, and they won't recover from that one. Billy's gonna get the heck out of there so that the Kirin, the ancient tree man, does not kill him, especially with that magic damage and the fact that Billy cannot heal anymore. And we're going to try to move Wario's Ideal, our second bloated corpse, around. Hopefully it doesn't get caught. Looks like the tree man sights him, but we pop the spear fissures net on him. And we're going to try to get to that barrier. Dodging arrow fire as we go. Come on. <laughs> Still got enough HP, but damn, it looks like the yeah, the Dryads run just a little bit faster and force him to explode. Oh well, and that's the risk you run when you use and the bloated corpses. A one fail, one success, and we'll bring that one back to try him again later. Honestly, I thought that the bloated corpses would be necessary in this battle due to the types of units that we were facing off against, but we're doing a lot better than I was uh, originally thinking we might. Still a few units holding off on their barricades here, but there is a lot of pistol fire, and that's going to be fired up into them. And at the same time, the cutlasses will swing and break the other barriers down as well, no matter how many Eternal Guard or Dryads they send at us. More Sartosa Militia together with handgunners are moving in to surround uh, the enemy lord here who got trapped with the spearfisher's net as well as the uh, as well as the tormentor sword on billy butler having the ability to use stop enemies essentially twice is very very handy and especially on a range heavy army like the vampire coast so that tormentor sword is a very nice pickup all right, and now this guy is trapped. He's fighting the regular unit of Sartosan Free Company, the melee only ones. But that's just fine as we are perfectly willing to sacrifice those guys. We are going to replace them all after all. And they may not be zombies, but they are very much replaceable, though I suppose anybody is replaceable. Anyway, the handgunners and the Sartosa militia continue applying their armor-piercing damage to Akiran, the enemy lord, and he should be down in a second. Pretty long battle, 19 minutes. But hardly surprising that it's uh, a longer one. And it looks like just like the other malevolent tree man, the ancient tree man, will be going down. He's broken, he has 800 HP left and a couple more volleys. We'll see the enemy lord fall. I don't imagine the battle will last much longer than this. There we go, could have used some fire here. But I guess everything's waterlogged, so, you know, might be difficult. And with all the black powder everywhere, maybe you want to avoid actual fire as everything will just explode. Alrighty, balance of power about 80% in our favor now. Bats are moving in to start annoying enemy Glade Guard, and we are now streaming through the enemy barricades as well. Billy Butler and Aranessa still working together on another unit of uh, Treekin and Eternal Guard, but it looks like they failed and will be moving to the other Glade Guard here. Still a bit of a contest here as the Krabby Boys continue to lead. Let's see how much damage they've done throughout the uh, battle, actually. Riding Prometheans, 58 kills and 900 damage. Not too bad, but you have to once again remember that this is the purpose of this unit is to act as an anchoring point for their 76 melee defense and their various resistances. They've been fighting all this time without any heals and they're basically at full HP still. And I don't believe have lost a single unit either. Can't wait until we can get the gunnery mob variety so that they can fight and gun at the same time. Or fight in melee and gun. Alright, plenty of dryads there, but we can hold them off, I'm sure, and let's see. Oh, we don't need to, as finally, despite the uh, three nearly full HP, well, actually, half HP units of dryads remaining, the battle will end, and the enemy will shatter. Fantastic. 
Fantastic. I'm not entirely sure how many zombies we lost in order to achieve this, but I guess we're going to find out. Either way, no Sartosan units were destroyed, despite the disparity in unit quality when facing off against this particular faction. And now this relatively major threat, which could have, uh, well, hit the back lines of our territories, will be gone and forgotten. All right, well, that uh, that didn't go too bad at all. Unfortunately, while Bubbles did a great job by destroying a unit of Dryads, Wario's ideal got... Uh uh got hit by a running unit and just exploded which means we'll bring wario's ideal back and uh, try to get him to explode better and otherwise not too much in the way of losses unfortunately for the ai they would have been better off fighting on the field and i would have preferred to have done so except for the fact that any units that survived which would have been many would have meant that we would have had to fight the big tree battle anyway again again because the auto resolve would have failed so it was just better to do it this way instead uh looks like we won't need to deal with anything in aranessa's army at least and ooh gleaming pennant mm, probably should go for our undead army the extra leadership will be much more valuable on the on those liable to crumble away than it will be on the sartosans uh we're going to ooh huh we could raise it for 500 infamy and 4.7k and just bring it back up and running. It's going to go down to tier 1 anyway. I think this is actually worth our time. Let's raise it. I don't know how much it's going to cost to recolonize, but 500 infamy is essentially a free tech. And a decent chunk of change at that. Rotting Promethean available for Aaron Nessa as well. Maddie, are you able to catch up to Akira the Lost? Alas, no. Uh, you can recolonize this place, though. Like so. Very nice, and maintain control of three provinces, so that counts as a full province, so we also got a free and jellyfish in a jar. Wound action, assassinate action, and enables poison attacks. I... Hmm... You guys have magical attacks, so by giving you the jellyfish in a jar, it does waste the buffs for wound and assassinate, but you now have poison and magical attacks. We also have to keep in mind that the poison will stack with the chilling aura, so minus 40% speed to those nearby and another minus 20% when hit, which is pretty darn good. Actually makes me think that uh, we should keep an eye out on Morngul Haunters that naturally have a poison... Uh, poison contact effect on them, as it seems like it would be a pretty darn good combination. Yeah, alright. When recruiting another one, I'll probably right. do that. Maddie, you're probably going to need to get a couple of units back up and running, but we can also do that next turn, as there's no real need right now. And Nessie, you cannot unfortunately go into March stance. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, well. Uh, uh, did I just do something and it prevented... Weren't you... Oh, when you were in parlay stance, you had constant casualty replenishment rate, but uh, the uninhabitable forest is preventing you from healing. Yeah, that was my bad. I do wish that it didn't... Uh, it didn't prevent you from going back into a stance, but I guess then we would have lost infamy this way anyway. All right, we're at... Oh, 16 turns to get all this. You know what? Maybe we should spend some of the infamy to get another upgrade here. I don't know if there are any ones that are worth our time right now. The Fizz Resist on the uh, on the Krabby Boys and the Necrofexes will be great. Upkeep reduction for uh, a lot of units that we don't have right now, unfortunately. Corrupt the Land and Skull and Crossbow Speed, Attribute Stock, Attribute Strider. Nah, I don't feel like any of that's really all that worth it. At least not right now. Um, or at least I don't care to spend 500 infamy on it. I'd rather wait for command to be back up and running. Or, well, not back up, but uh, be up and running. Research rate at 60%. Hopefully we can get that. Anyway, now so you're going to get that officer's cabin up. And we will... Oh, I should have built it last turn, but not a big deal. And we will also level you up. You are level 11. No, we will not. We will level you up next time you level up. 
We gotta get that worst nightmare up and running. Increase plunder from encounters at sea faction wide as well. Well, we will obviously send out an army to sea shortly, as soon as we have enough money. Ooh, gotta keep an eye out on you as well, sir. All right, we should also upgrade you. Slums of the Cursed, don't bother collecting income here. And campaign movement range reduction, construction time for all buildings, global recruitment capacity faction wide. That's interesting. Uh, control plus six casualty replenishment. But infamy lost. Nah, looks like Drudge of the Sea is still going to be the superior one. At least at the current time. Uh, Capelli. Now let's get you. Now the slave pits for a little bit more cash. And let's get the... Well... I was gonna build a horde of filched firearms, but we can also build it here instead. So it doesn't really a priority at the current time. We have other things to prioritize. We need a little bit more growth here, in fact. You know what, let's get rid of the bat building next turn as we may want to. Now we can just raise some bad screw it. Here are the bad building, we'll replace it with the growth building. We'll keep the rusty tr pistol trove for now. And I believe we're good. Alright, check to Diplo, or check Diplo rather, in case there's anything useful, but it doesn't look like it. The sp Huh? Wait, but you're dead. You're willing to peace out? Wait, you don't have any other territories. Huh. We can get free 2.2k from them. <laughs> what will they do then? Uh, I'm gonna be curious to see how this uh, little faction reacts. I mean, it's free money. I could get, we could do a non-aggression pact as well, but uh, I don't think they'll ever like us enough for that anyway. Hmm. Hey, you know what? Money is money. Peace out. I'm very curious to see what'll happen. And then we're going to tell you not to trespass in our territory. <laughs> oh, that's funny. There you go. Trespass. This is just feels mean. Now we're just now we're just bullying the uh, uh, the wood elves. But you know what? It's appropriate. Anyway, uh, looks like we're good. And ooh, guess what? Mister Gunnery White has. You now have the enchanted ballistics. Oh, lovely. What else do we have, by the way? The powder keg. Yes, that's nice as well. Dead eyes is the passive upgrade for missile damage. Passive or active? The active one is quite strong and does give increased accuracy. I mean, obviously we're getting everything here, but uh, yeah. All right, skip, skip outpost. Yes, and wait a second. We should have an office available now for Maddie. Uh, what do we have here? Infamy loss per turn 25. Missile strength for Lord's Army for various gunnery units. We can get our research rate and construction costs for all buildings. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with Fleet Engineer for now. Even at the cost of 25 infamy per turn. Alrighty, we'll just need another source of infamy and we'll need to send another army out to sea. As soon as we build up enough buildings in Lucini, as in the plains of Lucini province, not Lucini the settlement, that'll probably make us enough money to get another army. Especially as the zombie armies are reasonably cheap. Though poor at auto resolving. Alright, let's see what poor Kieran the Lost will do here. Uh, are you going to declare war on us? No, you want to trade. I'm going to feel bad in a few turns when we inevitably destroy you. But you have territory we need. Trespassing warning ignored. Spirits has ignored your trespassing warning. Alright, I believe we're supposed to give them one more turn. PD has a rotting Promethean as well. Nice. A lot more crabbies. Uh, Renessa, I would like you to go into March Dance, into Lucini. Out of this place. Maddie, I guess you're going to stay here because we'll need to deal with uh, Kieran the Lost. Are you able to switch to Dig? Yes. Oh, did I already do the Dig? I think I already did the Dig. Whoops. Uh, treasure maps and pieces of eight. Not uh, this one. Oh, I guess I have to go closer to Lucini, but I didn't do the Dig. I lied. All right, and also somebody comment. Ooh, ooh, Skull Island. Ooh, Gentleman Jenkins. All right, I think rather than immediately attacking Potamjior, if Gentleman Jenkins stays nearby, we'll have Veronessa uh, attack him and destroy him. Does he hold a piece of eight? Yes, indeed, he does, and gives us the ability to unlock the Black Spot Zombie Pirate Gunnery Mob with handguns. All right, hopefully he doesn't escape. But either way, we'll want the uh, we'll want the Skull Island here. All right, happy about that one. Uh, let's see about any further upgrades for our settlements. We make no money right now, so we'll need to uh, and deal with that. Uh, tree and noose for the growth for you. Sartosa. 
Armory of the Soulless. And, you know what, I'm just gonna upgrade these lynching posts. They're not that expensive, and frankly, it, it's just going to annoy me constantly seeing that, oh, we can't, uh, we, you can build something or upgrade something or whatever. Anyway, uh, looks good to me. Garrison Lord and assigned skill points help post available. Diplomacy. Mm, ooh, bloody hands. You're getting quite strong, and it appears they're destroying Kislev here. I would imagine that we're going to be forced into a fight with them. And is that Clan Moors? No, it's Clan Treacherick. Not the same. Mm. All right. I really wanted to avoid getting into the Badlands, um, but by the looks of it, since Wurzag is doing so well, we may not have a choice, because he'll attack us because of the AI. Who is he at war with, by the way? He's at war with the Skaven. Hmm. Oh, wait, no, that's you. That's not you. I meant to click Wurzag. Where's that? Who are you over with? Oh, you're only over with these guys. Uh, okay. He's strength rank one and right beside us. Oh, that's real interesting. Hmm. All right. So here's what we'll need to consider with this. If we, hmm. And we don't have enough armies to deal with him right now. As in, without Aranessa being involved, which might mean we need to send Aranessa southward. Alright, let's on the turn and see what happens. I would prefer if we didn't. You have to send Aranessa down there, I mean, and she could continue pushing up north, but if we have to, we have to. Adapt and overcome, etc. I don't know what the etc part of that was. Adapt, overcome, raise dead. Sounds about right. Uh, Lorenzo, you want us to join war against this little tiny orc faction? No need. In fact, it looks like the orc faction will destroy you, and it will take your territory. Uh, pay swords have been destroyed. I don't know what that faction is. And, ah, Gentleman Jenkins. Moved away. A crying shame. Nessie, I would like you to sail on towards the Skull Island here. Hmm, wait. How many turns will it take to six turns? Damn, I was hoping to move here and grab some rotting Prometheans for Ernessa, but that's not gonna happen right now. Uh, let's get the slave pits up and running in Befardo. I don't want to lose the movement. You know what? Go here. And we'll do the Skull Island first, because who knows, maybe we'll sight Gentleman Jenkins nearby. I still don't see him. Oh, there he is. Yeah, I'll move this way. Alright, we'll see how far he goes. Maybe he'll attack us. If he attacks us, we'll... well, you know what? No, let's level up just in case he does. Still possibly concerning. Dead eyes for you. In Gunnery White. A little bit of extra armor piercing missile and base missile damage. You, Billy Butler. And we'll get Evaness now. And we may want to get missile resistance for you as well. All right, lovely. Nessie needs to level up at least one more time. Lucini, you are going to be upgrading your dead pirate's holdout. And let us also get the plunder pile up and running immediately. I'd love to get the growth, but it's pretty necessary to make actual money here. And let's upgrade the lynching post as well. He Who is this? And why is he here? Oh. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like the fact that you're here. Go away. <laughs> uh... Hmm... Concerning. Okay, Maddie. It, oh, you can raise a Sirene. Oh, I feel like that's going to be worth our time. Sirenes are quite good. And oh, we have deck dropper bombers as well. Fascinating. All right, let's raise the deck dropper bombers. I fear that you're going to have to fight. Uh, let's bring Wario's Ideal back, despite the cost. And you have no mortar, but you cannot raise a mortar. Let's get the uh, sirens for now. Recruit. All right, I don't know if this will be a decent enough army for you to uh, survive, but we'll see. Rename. Wario's Ideal. All right, you try to explode more better this time. Are you at war with anybody who's near us? Oh, he's at war with the Blueface tribe, eh? Huh. So he might be moving over here. You know what? I'm going to not do this right now. If he continues moving through this territory, we might be able to attack him and destroy this army and then move up to Varezzo right after. Hmm. It would be nice if it works. 
Although I'm not sure that it will. Anyway, uh, we can get a trade agree agreement going with Clan Tree Churik if we wanted to. They're currently at war with Skulltakers in order of the Winter Sun. I have to wonder whether this particular clan is angry at war. How does Warzag feel about it? Oh, where are you going, Warzag? He is at war with the Exiles of Nehek. I don't know where the Exiles of Nehek are on this map. And the Kislevites are dead. Hmm. Do we make a little mini alliance with this little Skaven faction? You know what? I'm gonna say yes. Simply so that they don't try to attack us. Ah, oh, they're friendly with the Sun Eaters, which is an ogre faction, right? Hmm. Alright. Honestly, I'm willing to ally with pretty much anybody in the Badlands at the current time, as I don't want to deal with the Badlands uh, ourselves right now, anyway. Maddie, just in case, let's get you in level up. Let's get to you another point in Drown Dead, since you're gonna spam it. And then we'll pop a point in Invocation of the Heck and then the Hunger. You should probably get Wind of Death ASAP as well, but, uh, well, honestly, there's a lot of good stuff in here. How's your loyalty looking, by the way? It's at rank 9, so you're okay. And we did get a Talisman of Protection. I guess we can get that to you for now. All right. End the turn. Let's see where Sir Jenkins goes. Come on, attack Nessie. Give us that piece of eight. Please don't run. I really don't want to uh, be uh, spending all of our time chasing these guys down. He's never going to get a better chance at uh, hurting Aranessa's army since she's in full speed stance with vigor, a reduction. And of course, an SFO vigor reduction is absolutely massive. Come on, Jenkins. Ah, you coward. Cowardly Jenkins. All right, well, regardless, we will still be able to sail to the Skull Reef. And is that army still here? I don't know where it went. All right. He will face a foe in battle. Let's see what we're looking at here. Pyrrhic victory. And I forgot to transfer this thing, but for now we'll make use of it. Uh, go on, one of you. Uh, they have three mortars and a rotting leviathan. Ugh. I really wish that the undead had a mechanic where they can essentially rest control. You know how, like, you can take artillery pieces? When undead fight other undead, uh, victory should allow them to randomly rest control of an undead unit uh, to join them. Not necessarily a vampiric unit, perhaps, but certainly an undead unit that has no will of its own, like the Rotting Leviathan, like any zombie types of units, but not like Blood Knights or Death Guard, because they're vampires. Though I guess the vast majority of them would be thralls. Hmm, I might still join. Well, either way, I think it would be a nice touch. Anyway, uh, can we do this? Four units of Death Guard, lots of mortars. It's going to be concerning. It's going to be a fight, certainly. Let's see if I can pull it off. Alrighty, here we go. Four Depth Guard as well as three Mortars and a Rotting Leviathan to face off against. All of which are going to be very concerning. I don't know how many Sartosa Militia units it would take to kill off a single uh, Depth Guard, but it's a lot. One with dual-handed axes could probably rip four of them apart and still continue to fight, I'm willing to bet. And you also have to remember that the vampires are quite fast, as in the Depth Guard vampires are quite fast, so these guys can't even kite them that well, as in they'll just run away and keep on killing them as they run. Anyway, it looks like the enemy is sufficiently annoyed to move towards us, mostly because our mortars are forward and are firing at some of their units, while their mortars remain out of range. I am very jealous of the big crabby boy that the enemy have. But not to worry, we'll get a couple of these in Aranessa's army as well, since she buffs them. And it makes sense for the Daughter of the Sea God to have some creatures of the Sea God in her army as well. I, uh, though, just to echo one of my own comments, I feel like Aranessa should be able to get the ability to recruit a couple of non-rotting leviathans. Well, that would be nice. And as her mount as well. But anyway, this is us, speaking of her mount, this is also the first time that she is going to be on her own, a rotting Promethean. 
And we'll see how she fares in this form. And now that she's a lot more tanky. 60 melee defense, 58 melee attack, and she does have that bleed application as well. Though I believe she had that before. If we pop her into a pile of infantry, she should be able to, she should be able to mince them reasonably well. 13 ward save and 27% physical resist as well. She's missing missile resist altogether, but uh, well, we can deal with that. Anyway, it looks like the enemy mortars are about to get destroyed by our felbats, who have foolishly, and foolishly the mortars, decided to target the felbats. That is most definitely not going to work as they will get mobbed and destroyed. As those crews are just too fragile to do anything with that. Very nice, very nice. Crews are out. There is still one more mortar firing away, but it'll be out soon. We also have our deck gunners targeting the biggest threats on the field, which are those deck gunners with uh, twin axes. We want to basically knock out these units or damage them heavily enough that they can't really fight our Sartosans. Of course... There are four units of Depth Guard on the field that will leave the pole arms to fight the Sartosans, as their armor piercing will at least be wasted on the relatively unarmored militia. And at the same time, they also are not going to be able to apply their anti-large fighting them as well. Whereas the anti-infantry of the regular Depth Guard, or the Twin Max Depth Guard, will. Anyway, Depth Guard continue to move forward, but now they have to contend with the pistol fire from the Sartosan units. And while the enemy is faster than us, we can still back away a little bit and gun them down. Very nice, somebody just lost his head. All right, the crabby boy, the big crab, has made it into the fray as well, the running leviathan. Billy Butler will try to hold him off to get up the little crabbies while Aranessa tries to go after the enemy lord, who is a polearm lord as well. So he does have cavalry bane as well as that massive 66 melee defense. Well, good for him. Mortars continue to fire and we continue to fight on the flanks, but it looks like this battle will be ours fairly quickly. I mean, it is only a skull island after all. Anyway, Aranessa, continue watching while your crab does all the work. Once again, a little bit of a shame that uh, the older animations don't have the lords to really do anything. It's unlikely that the level will redo them, but it would be nice. With regards to things like this, and I commented this in a reply to another comment, either last episode or the episode before that, uh, that the Chaos War Shrines, the Chaos Sorcerers on the War Shrines, their animations are fantastic. They also sit up here on a much bigger unit, but they sort of like grab the rail and sort of flip around and smack people around with their uh, uh, with their war stuff. It's pretty great. Anyway, uh, Aranus is doing pretty okay. She's taking a little bit of damage, but the enemy lord is in weak binding and will be out shortly. Billy and his own crabby boys here are looking like they are overwhelming uh, the big crab, the rotting leviathan which has begun to melt away. And it looks like a Spirit Leech comes down on one of our units of Sartosan Militia, but that's probably a waste. And the enemy Depth Guard are still fighting. Damn, look, this one unit of Depth Guard, and this is the Pole Arms, not the uh, Twin Axes, has forced... I think this one routed and came back. This one's nearly dead, and these guys are at like half HP. Yeah. I mean, we're a tier 1 infantry versus a tier 4, so <laughs> it was never going to go well, but uh, still interesting to see, especially against the pole arms and not the twin axes. On the bright side, though, with them and their weak binding, they are out of here. Looks like Big Crab falls as well, overwhelmed and by piles of little crabs and the enemy lord. And goes down, just a few enemy units left, I think, mainly this one unit of Depth Guard, and this big old Skull Island treasure trove will be ours as well. A lovely. Too bad we can't take on those Depth Guard or those other units as our own. All right, getting some much bigger and better battles of this episode compared to the last as the enemy army sizes have grown, especially the uh, Wood Elf battle. I'm excited to see what other battles we'll see next time. Anyway.
Ooh, alrighty, that uh, that certainly felt a little bit dangerous, at least against some of the enemy forces. The depth guard that we were unable to destroy from range absolutely made mincemeat of our Sartosan infantry. I mean, it's a tier 4 armored units versus low tier, tier 1 infantry. Once again, we will have to replace all of these Sartosan militia later with Sartosan mercenaries, the higher tier version of the same unit, and... Thus, I probably won't uh, be calling for names for the Sartosan militia, but for the Sartosan mercenaries that we replace them with later on. Anyway, uh, let's see, you can get 2.6k out of that, and I think that's probably worth our time, so uh, let's do it. We are building up our empire. And we should get a lovely 20k for our trouble from that Skull Island. Uh, there we go, and right unlocked, Curse of the Queen's Cannon, Queen Bess is up and running. And we got an Armor of the Deep, a reduction in fire resistance, but 12 melee defense ain't too bad. It's probably inferior to the Armor of Fortune because of the ward f save and physical. Ernest's defense is fairly high. What's your melee defense? Yours is actually quite low. Hmm. I wonder which one would be better for you. You're already probably weak to fire. Actually, no, you're not weak to fire. Hmm. Armor with the massive physical resistance, but at a loss of essentially 10% resistance against physical stuff and 5% versus everything else. Uh, they're both decent options, and I shall have to give it some thought. And uh, Nessie, quick question. Can you, or do you want to build anything from here? No, probably not. We are now able to build, ah, vampire fleet captains. In fact, wait, Nessie, you should be able to build your own vampire fleet captains. Are you not in shipbuilding? Yeah, there's still a tier one and A. Hey, we got a uh, poison one as well. All right, all right. Mm, you would want to get a lore of the deeps one. Uh, I'm not big on dark majesty or devious, however. And Dread Incarnate, enemy leadership reduction, enemy units and pro armies and province ain't too bad. The cunning on the death lore is okay. And, ah, uh, too bad. We don't have the ability to get the uh, in gunnery whites. I'm actually tempted to recruit a vampire fleet captain and then delete it in order to replace it. I mean, Dark Majesty ain't too bad. And, and you know what? Here's what we'll do. We can get Dark Majesty for Maddie, because Maddie is a vampire lore. Now let's get her a deep slore as well to join her, and then hopefully we'll have a deep slore to uh, join Nessie as well. Uh, yeah, Dark Majesty, I guess. Hopefully it gets replaced with something better. I like so. And away you go. All right, Henrietta Booty Catcher. Well, 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 if it isn't the sister of the legendary Dick Booty Catcher. Uh, well, now I'm going to have to put her into into Dick Booty Catcher's army. He's going to be one of the uh, special admirals because uh, it's a callback. Anyway, Aranessa, are you able to build anything here? You are, but you might be better off healing up at Sartosa, so let's heal up at Sartosa. You will heal here more, yes? Yes, quite a bit more, in fact. Though you are losing magic yes. slash mana if you do, but oh well. Uh, you are also, or you have also reached level 12, which means the good stuff. Mutant gives you HP and perfect vigor. Uh, we can make, no, no, let's get self-taught gunner to get the army ability of Norse Aurora, Sartosa 42 pounders, and Sartosa grape shot. What else do we have here? Gifted Sailor Casualty or Punishment Rate and Movement? Yep, yeah, I don't even care what the other stuff is. That's the one we're going. Uh, your Worst Nightmare. Increased Plunder from Encounters at Sea. Probably it would have been nice to have that before the Skull Island, but I'm sure we'll find another one. And then I guess we're going through Creatures of Manan because of the Missile Resistance for the Krabbies and the Upkeep Reduction for the Sartosans. All right, that's a pretty big power spike at rank 12. We're also going to get to the growth rate increase from the anchor chain building and oh we actually have two things that we can get the pirate crew versus growth for local province attrition reduction don't really care about any of those at the current time we should probably go through the main deck tree in order to be able to recruit sartosa pirate mercenaries asap and though once again at the same time i want those riding promethean gunnery mobs i mean they're both fine 
We should probably just build one of the, either the hull or the other hull. And I guess out of the two hulls, it'll have to be the recruitment one, so we can recruit faster. Hmm. I don't really care about the ship's wheel stuff, to be perfectly frank. It's probably not going to give us all that much benefit. You know what? I think for now, these aren't going to be all that useful. Let's... Let's instead go for one of these. I'm going to start with you. Because this has to be a tier 4. We'll at least be able to build zombie powered gunnery mobs with hand cannons if we should desire to do so here. I mean, she's going to have every single one of the military chain buildings anyway, so that's not going to uh, make much of a difference. I can always delete them. Change them out as needed. Anyway, uh, slave pits for you to get more money, and I guess we'll upgrade the growth rate here as well. Lucini will get the swag sex up and running, and... You know what, I think the pistol trove may no longer be necessary here. Let's just replace you with another growth thing. Yeah. All right, that I'm reasonably happy with. Otherwise, Diplo is looking okay. We need to make some allies, though. This the ally is going to be dead shortly. Hmm, we may even want to get some defenses up and running in this particular territory. Also, yeah, I don't know where that other army went. I... Oh, it's returned to here. Okay, well, that's unfortunate. Maybe I should have attacked it after all. Even with Aranessa busy. Anyway, invocation of Nahik for you, Madeline. The spammable stuff be spammable, or more spammable. Anything neat that you can raise here? Oh, you can raise a mortar now. Uh, we're going to need to get you a mortar. Let us replace, I guess, one of the regular gunnery mobs. Ooh, deck droppers with handguns as well. Hmm. This isn't really going to be a deck dropper army. You know, I know, this is, uh, this is one of these guys. And we have hand cannons as well. I say we raise the handguns, deck droppers, and the mortars. Well, at the very least, we definitely want to raise the mortars. And get rid of you as well. Might actually just replace all the zombie powered deck hands mob with gunnery mobs. Might be a better option. They're not going to be able to hold as long because their melee defense is trash at. 10. That's not actually that much lower than the uh, these guys, just their HP. is a wee bit different. Oh, we can get an animated Hulk unit in here, just for fun. You know what? That's a pretty decent combination with the Sirenes. This army's probably going to swap out into multiple armies later on, because there's no you know, theme for it at the current time. And I think we'll replace Wario's ideal with the... Oh, you know what? Get rid of one of the scurvy dogs. Sorry, doggos. I replace it with the deck droppers with handguns. Keep one doggo in there. And I think that's good enough now. I don't want to spend too much money screwing around with that particular army. Uh, this army has trespassed against you. You can declare war on this faction without suffering treachery penalties for breaking non-aggression pacts. Blah, 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 blah. Is it actually like that right now? Or is it one more turn? You know, let's not risk it. Let's kill him next turn. So, skip, 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 and turn now. And then we'll destroy that particular faction. It's not like we were in any, any hurry whatsoever. Also, as I was saying earlier, somebody commented that there is in fact a sea lane somewhere out here off the course of Sart coast rather of Sartosa. I'm not entirely sure where it is though, but uh, well, maybe, and we'll have to take a look. The blessings imbued into your weapon, Kraken's bane, are weakening, Mistress. It is clear your father, Lord Manan, is in need of your assistance. All right, so well, uh, Kraken's Bane will... Ooh, two mammoths and a giant. All right, that'll be an interesting fight. It'll unlock the Gallows Giant Necrofex as well as Aranessa's own weapon, which has a nice buff as well, which will hopefully combine with the buff from the uh, Brass Cleaver. We do possibly want to save this for when we want to get the plus 25% casualty replenishment as in when our army gets badly damaged though so and we'll wait on the battle i think at least for a little bit oh it's right beside us we wouldn't even have to teleport i'll think about it either way what we do want to do is pop the curse of the queen's cannon perform right and though it will be insanely costly 
And we want to get the Queen Bess up and running. 570. Ouch. Indefinite ouch. Uh, I guess we get rid of one of the regular Sartosan Free Companies, mostly because I prefer the militia anyway. Out. And Queen Bess. Nessie and Bessie. Together at last. And I guess we'll keep this one, but we'll give you the... The dead man's chest. I would like you, however, to have the gleaming pennant. They're having the armor of the deep as well. Gleaming pennant for one of your units so that they don't die. And attack via parlay stance. Like so. What? Reliability very low. Well, that's a shame. It's... But we... Okay. <laughs> Well, that screws our reliability over for a while, but what can you do? It's... we issued the trespassing warning, and I guess it didn't work. Oh, and this is gonna kill off the bloated corpse. Okay, you know what? <laughs> that whole thing was unfortunate, but oh well. I'm going to just do that off screen, because that is a waste of our time. And that's one of the things with the bloated corpses. You basically have to use them. You can't keep them in your army, or the auto result will kill them off. Anyway, now with that, I am going to call the battle here. Had some great battles and plenty of booty. The battles get bigger, and so does the booty, I guess. And in this particular uh, episode, as special and Henrietta Booty Catcher has uh, not so ironically and joined us as well. Next time we sail northward towards Varezzo and start taking uh, these territories and probably start prepping for a war with Wurzag as I'm 90% sure uh, that he will attack us. And I'm not sure where we'll send Maddie as yet, but we will probably start building our third army to send out to sea, and I might just go ahead and fight the battle for the Kraken's Bane as well. Anyway, thanks again for uh, joining us on uh, this a journey to remake the vampire coast in the old world don't forget to those leave those likes and comments below especially to threshold if you want a second episode on saturday or an hour long episode next time around all glory to the algorithm and thanks for watching